we're talking about the books you should be reading next in 2023. Um, it's been a fascinating book, fascinating book, fascinating year of books. And I will get into that as far as some of the books that I've already been into. Um, but there's also some books that are coming out. And if you don't know the publishing world, then books are really there's kind of this season of books and the season is usually in the fall. So that's why when you see like, let's say a former president and a former first lady, if you see um, a memoir from a major religious figure, all those things, you notice they always come out in the fall, like almost, almost like clockwork. There's a reason for that. That season, um, as far as the season we're about to go into is considered the biggest season. And so that's when the big books come out. Mine is actually independently published <laughs> from Bring Your Worth Publishing. I meant, forgot to mention that. And so this is actually my own little baby done as much as possible with my own little hands. So I'm actually just part of that season just because of timing. But the rest of these are, are these heavy hitters, including some major names that I'm proud to, to say are in my circle and or I've, I've respected their work and had a chance to connect with them over time. So the books I'm going to highlight most of them will be out very, very soon, as in like October, November, believe it or not, we're all, all way, already in the second half of August. So a lot of these books will be out in a matter of weeks. A couple of these books actually already came out, but I missed them. And so I did a program a handful of months ago, and I'll put the link in there in a moment, um, where I talked about my favorite books so far in 2023. Then there were these, these amazing books that, that you know, there's a lot of books that came out. And somehow I was like, oh, my gosh, how did I miss that? How did I miss that? And so we're going to talk about um, a handful of books that are about to come out and then a handful of books that are actually great, but it might have been under your radar or at least it was under mine. So let's get into the show. All right. First one is Data Baby by Susanna Breslin. Shout out to Susanna. Uh, <clears throat> For most of these, I actually have a physical copy. That's how we're rocking nowadays in 2023 is back to the vinyl and physical copies. This is an early copy, so it looks a little bit rougher. Thank you for uh, Susanna and the, and the publishing company for setting an early copy over to me. Data Baby, let me make sure I get the subtitle right. My Life and a Psychological Experiment. Whew. So here's the, here's the short version, and apologies to Susanna if I miss anything. When Susanna was based over in the Bay Area uh, a few decades ago and she was born, her family actually involved her in a social experiment. And I believe it was the, based on her research, it was one of the largest social experiments ever done to find out what factors, I guess, nature versus nurture, if you're, if you're opinion your psychology, what factors create someone who has a successful life, quote unquote. <clears throat> and so there are all these different things that she was exposed to, as were the many, many other people in the study. She's been a journalist as long as I've been. We've actually known each other for quite a while, cross paths. And now she's actually looking back and saying, wait a second, how much of this made an impact on my life? And what does this mean? One of the powerful things with being um, a writer or in both my case and Susanna's case, a journalist, <clears throat> is that you have a way of, you have like a lens in your life. That could be a gift and a curse, as Susanna would probably attest to, where sometimes you could be so objective that, you know, it's, it's like a photographer's lens, if you're familiar with that, where if you're a professional photographer, or even in my case, I found this with starting the, the, um, the Bring Your Worth show at bringyourworth.tv, that you start to see the story and the potential in everything. It's like, oh, well, this could mean that, or this could mean that. The positive side about that, or the um, useful side, is that there's a level of objectivity that you have about your own life. So she's one of the, she's one of the few. I, I actually haven't heard of, heard of the study at all. And so she's the first person that I heard of who is a professional writer and wasn't just writing about the study, but actually was a part of the study. And so it ends up being this energy of memoir. I just started it. I'm excited about it. Again, I've known Susanna over the years. 
we've worked together a little bit and I've watched her grow. She actually has fantastic, um, fantastic fiction that uh, is available over at her websites as well, as well as, you know, as all the places I talked about, just look up her name and really, really good fiction. I'm not even a big fiction person, but I loved the fiction that she wrote. Probably, I think she wrote a couple of fiction novels, I want to say about a decade ago. They're fantastic. If I was more prepared, I actually would have the links in there, but just go and check out her name. You can do it on Amazon or just look up her name. She has a unique name, as you know, and uh, check out her stuff. But this is actually coming out, I want to say in November, yeah, in November, pre-order it, check it out. She's a fantastic storyteller. And from a little bit that I started reading, it's, yeah, if you're familiar with her work at all, or if you check out some of the stuff that she's blogged or written about online, she does not hold any punches. So this is her first memoir. Woo, I know it's, it's going to be a scorcher. So check out Susanna's book. Shout out to her. It's called Data Baby. Particularly... If I can get in my soapbox for a second, particularly right now, as we talk about AI, as we talk about uh, technology, as social media companies seem to be in a very uncomfortable position, it's like they're in their ugly teenage years, <laughs> no offense to teenagers, but it's an ugly time, and they're still trying to figure out what they are, this is a great time to kind of analyze that and talk about that. Again, my kids are seven and 10, so it's also already making me reflect as far as what it means to be a parent what it means to be driven to have a successful child and what links you might go through, go to, to have a successful child or to even be a successful child. So big food for thought. If you want to go deeper into some of my other recommendations, like I talked about, you can do uh, check out my live show. I'm trying to remember now, I want to say I did this back in March or April, right before the summer. And it's the best books of 2023 so far. Um, really, really good books on there. Some of my favorite books, some of my favorite books, period, uh, came out <laughs> in the spring. Like it was a killer spring, you know? Um, and I won't even get into all the books right now, but be sure and check it out. And it's similar to the format of this. When I do a show on Wednesday, it's, it's usually when I do a live show. And so if you like this format, you know, you know, feel free to subscribe. You can subscribe for free at bringyourworth.tv or check out the links below. <clears throat> excuse me, have a little bit of drainage just because it started thunderstorming here in Vegas, which is uh, as rare as um, as rare as snow in Las Vegas, which happened about a year ago. <laughs> All right. I got a question for y'all. Feel free to plug in in the comments. Um, what is your favorite book genre? I will go first. <clears throat> excuse me. My favorite genre in general, my favorite genre is nonfiction history or back when I was involved with the traditional publishing industry because I have a, a handful of books that are with traditional publishers. Shout out to y'all because I love y'all too. Shout out to Penguin and to um, and to Barnes & Noble Publishing, which published Career Remix, a book from a couple years ago and so forth. Shout out to all y'all. Um, back in the day, I would say about 10, 15 years ago, my favorite genre would have been called um, micro history. And microhistory basically means you're taking one simple piece of pop culture history, like, say, a French fry, or if you're familiar with the book, Cod, or shout out to Mark Kurlansky, his other uh, hit book called Salt. I was a big fan of Cod myself. I have a copy of Cod somewhere behind my big head over here. Microhistories are basically taking one, looking at one slice of culture and then using it to explain the rest of culture. Uh, my friend, my friend uh, Wayne Curtis, shout out to Wayne down in New Orleans. He has a book called And a Bottle of Rum, which of course is on the history of rum. And it's history based on a handful of, of different, uh, different cocktails that are based on rum. And he talks about the whole history of the world from people being enslaved, to the discovery of America, to all this this stuff. In fact, I need to reread his book because his book came out quite a quite a while ago. But fantastic stuff. That is my personally my favorite genre, and it's evolved. Um, my two closest friends are actually fiction writers. Shout out to y'all, and so they really exposed me to uh, fiction in ways that you know me being up until a young adult, I was a pretty, I wouldn't say hard boiled journalist, but I was definitely hard boiled nonfiction, and that was my main focus. And now it's expanded and um, 
all the books I'm recommending today, I believe, are nonfiction. But I have a couple other books that I'm into right now that are actually fiction or creative nonfiction, which is uh, basically fiction, but or I'm sorry, nonfiction. So a true story, but with some liberties involved. And that's probably the closest I got when, when I was a wee lad getting into fiction. And as, as I've gotten older, I've gotten more into fiction, particularly the classics like the Hemingways and the, the Fitzgeralds. But if there's a certain genre that you're into, be sure and, and throw it down in the comments.